the back. Chris, well done on a great win. Were you surprised that your opponent survived that third round because you were landing so precise, so clean? Did you think he was going to make it to the end of that round? Um, in the moment, I wasn't really thinking about that. You know, I knew Yanal was going to be tough. Uh, I prepared for a tough fight. Um, I know I've got power. I didn't want to rush it. You know, I'm still a baby to this game, so um, got some good octagon time in there, and you know, it was a good performance. You were smiling in there constantly. You know, you were looking to the crowd when you was ducking them head kicks. Was that key for you to be enjoying every moment in there? Because it's not often you get to fight on a massive card in London. I know you've done that back to back. This is uh, this is my dream. Um, I remember phoning my girlfriend uh, on the way back from a seminar, and uh, I'd mentioned to her that you know when I was blowing out candles, or if I seen a shooting star, or I was making a wish, I would always say, uh, "I want to be in the UFC." So that's why I'm smiling when I'm in there. Um, can I swear here? And this is the fucking problem show. <laughs> Um, and just in terms of that precision striking, you know, you were laser accurate with those strikes tonight. And I can see comparisons with your teammate, Dustin Poy, in there. In terms of what you learned from him week in, week out at ATT, what are some of the biggest things you've learned from him as a martial artist and as a person? Um, being in there with those guys, I just know I'm meant to be in there with the, the, like, the top ten guys. So as I said, I, I, made, I used to make wishes saying I was in the UFC, but my new wish is to get that top 15. Um, and these guys, you know, I walked in that door at ATT, I've said it numerous times, Dan Lambert w welcomed me with open arms and treated me like Dustin Poirier or Jorge Masvidal. You know, I can't thank those guys enough. Um, I'm just a random guy from the countryside in Scotland, and they welcomed me into that gym like I was one of their own, so shout out to those guys. Is there anyone in particular you're eyeing up next? Uh, Trevor Peake or Jordan Levitt. One of those two. Sounds like a good fight. Uh, Trevor's, Trevor comes to fight, and Jordan Peake's a great... Uh, jo sorry, Jordan Levitt's a great jiu-jitsu practitioner. Um, nothing against them, just think they're great opponents, and it would be, be fun to get in there with them. Give me another couple smiles in there. Well done. Thank you, I appreciate that. Chris, just one from me. I'm curious, did you and uh, Paul have to decide, like, flip a coin, who gets to go first with the face paint, or did you just get it done at the same nah, time? Nah, a lot of people said to me, they messaged me, um, and said that... Paul had been talking about it on his podcast and he said, oh, I hope he doesn't wear it. Like, I'm not focusing on what other people are doing. This is the fucking problem show. Like, I'm not giving a fuck what other people do. Like, I love Paul and I really like the guy, but, like, I'm not here for these fuckers. Like, I'm here for myself. Like, people don't realise that and people people think it's just, just a show. I'm not here for a show. I'm here to fucking kill. Um, and, like, you know, this, as I say, it's the problem show. Like, I don't care what anybody thinks. Just... Just get on, on with you and I'll get on with me. I think people underestimate that. that this of is course, a, of this course. Is you know, life, right? Yeah, like, I'm so fucking primal, it's unbelievable, you know. Like, like I get it, you know, but Paul started it and, like, that's his thing, you know. But we're Scottish and I wasn't thinking about, like, it's his gig. It's just I'm doing it for myself, you know. This is such a selfish sport. So um, just onwards and upwards and he's going to fly the flag next and I wish him all the best, you know. He's going to smash this guy and... Uh, the Scottish are coming through, so when Paul wins tonight, we're going to get a, a Scotland card on the go, for sure. I would shout out to Dana White, let's get the Scotland card going, you know, we've got Paul Craig, Joanne Calderwood, you know, we've got all these great guys, so I'd love to share the Optagon uh, with my, my, Scottish, my Scottish warriors, you know, and put on a show in either Glasgow or Edinburgh. People always talk about the London crowd, how hectic would a Glasgow crowd be? Yeah. <laughs> oh, scary, scary. <laughs> Chris, just over here. Um, you now looked like he had injured his wrist after the first round. Were you aware of that? Uh, no, I didn't notice it, no. Um, I, I, kinda, I remember throwing the, the high kick, and I think maybe it broke his wrist, but I kicked like a fucking mule. So um, everybody at American Top Team says I've got serious power. So um, sorry he broke his arm, but, you know, it's kill or be killed. And you held up a necklace when they read the school cards, does that have a significance? Yeah, this is uh, my mother's fingerprint. This is why I started this journey. My mum died April 18th, 2019, 2018, sorry. Um, you know, she was taken away from me in a blink of an eye. Um, the day before uh, my first ever MMA fight. So she died on the day of the weigh-ins um, and I still went ahead with my fight. So this is why I'm on this journey. Um, this is twice now I haven't got the mic in the, in the cage. I want to dedicate both fights to my mum. I haven't got a chance yet, so I'm going to dedicate every fight until I get that fucking mic. 
And you spoke uh, previously about Dustin Poirier training with him. He has a fight next weekend for the BMF title. I'm just curious how you think he's going to do against... Fourth, uh, fourth round knockout. Dustin Poirier all the way. It's his time. You should see him in training. He's like lightning. That guy's unbelievable. You know, everybody talks about Justin Gaethje's power, blah, blah, blah. But that Dustin Poirier's a sniper. Thank you. Congrats. Thank you. Chris, just on it. Um, I know you've mentioned Jordan Levitt and Trevor Peak as two opponents that you'd like to see next, possibly. Um, is that UFC Paris card something you're looking at, or is that just too soon? <laughs> Maybe at 170, because <laughs> I'm going holiday next week. But, um, you know, I'll need to have a chat. You know, I'm terrible for rushing things. Uh, now the money's in the bank, I don't need to rush too much. Uh, you know, I'm going to go and enjoy time with my family and give time. I've only been in this country for eight weeks this year. The rest of it's been away, an American top team. So I'm going to give my time to Laura and Summer because I miss them so, so, so much. I know you've actually did tweet before in the past saying that is there any lightweights that want to fight me at welterweight? <laughs> so is that something that you would be up for going uh, up to welterweight? 100%. You know, like, obviously we need to show that it's, it's just we're in a sticky situation at the moment. You know, everybody cuts weight. I cut a lot of weight as well. It's just terrible. It's just not fun. But it's what you do to get a little bit of a, a head, you know, get ahead of the game. You sacrifice 10 weeks or you sacrifice on the night. So if any of these uh, lightweights want to fight at 170, give me a call. Sounds good. Thank Congratulations. You. Thank you. All good? Thank you for your time, guys. Thank you.